What's up, everyone? This is Mars Man here, and welcome to Mars Man Gaming. We have a special video for you today. This is our Mars Man roundtable discussion on the first episode of the Halo TV series. And it's been, what, like an eight-year road to finally have a, a live-action Halo show. And honestly, it it's mixed with a bunch of different emotions. But like always, we have the Mars Man crew here with us. And to my left is Haki. Yes. And to my right is Langella Kill 75. What's up, everybody? So first thing, guys, um, I we're hit with a lot of emotions here, and I kind of, you know, it's it's a weird thing. I've been I've been waiting for a live action Halo series show for a long time, and when the when the announcement came out that we were gonna get a Halo show, I can I can just tell you from just like my personal preference, I was excited. I was like, I guess you would say a little nervous because of the fact that you know Halo and live action never melded correctly for a long time I'm not saying like oh there's been a halo tv show like the mario brothers show that was a mario brothers movie that was horrible like nothing like that but it was never accomplished everyone always wanted a halo show but never got one and now we're we were finally going to get one and it was a long time coming but here it is the show has has officially dropped at midnight uh, officially today and people were watching it dropping all their reviews and what they thought all three of us watched it and we didn't watch it together, so I kind of made sure we didn't because I didn't want to have any of us know each other's opinions on a lot of these things. I want us to be nice and fresh when we came to the roundtable discussion. Um, and just to give you my own personal thoughts, I was nervous uh, coming into this watching. I was, just to give everyone a heads up, I was watching mix and match. I was watching like in spurts. I watched the whole beginning, and then I watched the middle, and then I watched the end, and I was kind of just like, as I'm working, I'm like letting it soak in while I'm like doing my daily grind, and I'm just letting it kind of go over me and, and you know it's it was very interesting and i and i kind of want to start off today with just getting our general thoughts about the show and and, and i'll i kind of gave mine a little bit briefly already and i'll i'll finish off the the segment so I'll, let's go first with haki i want to let you talk about your, your general thoughts and then we'll go to angelic hill so haki what were your general thoughts about what you watch this show what would you would you feel like when you turned it when you tuned it in for the first time yeah, so um, I, I was like you. I was I was a little nervous, but definitely excited. Um, I probably watched ten minutes of it, and then my power randomly went off, which was like, okay, sure, that's that was a little weird. And then the power came back on. Um, but I mean, it was very cool. The action was cool. I didn't know if we discussed this. I didn't know it was rated TVMA, which is <laughs> yeah. pretty much like rated R. And I mean, you find out in the first five minutes that it's rated R pretty much. I, you know, I won't get too much into the details there, but um, the action was great. Um, you know, the elites looked cool and everything. Um, the one little con, I guess, was, well, well, we'll get into the major con, but the one con was uh, the CGI sometimes when the Master Chief like jumped in certain spots, like looked a little weird. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I liked the show. There was definitely some iffy parts of it but um yeah it was it was pretty cool and it was good to see master chief and uh i think it was called silver team right uh, yeah and silver team yep yeah uh, in action so and, you know we'll, we'll obviously get more in depth but i i i had i was a little nervous high hopes so it, it uh it did it did well for me we'll, we'll say that so until kill what were your general thoughts when you watched this yeah i similar to you guys i was cautiously optimistic um about the show um, and quite frankly, leading up to it in the you know, last coming months and weeks, I was actually getting more and more nervous hearing from the development team um, that created the show. And, and we heard a lot of different things about, you know, we talked about it uh, previously about it's going to be on its own timeline. Um, and then and then most recently, about two days ago, the director said he never played the games. Right. So when you hear that kind of stuff. You're just like, oh boy, um, what are we about to see here? Um, and so when I watched it, I thought, and we'll go into it, I thought there was some good, I thought there was some bad, and it didn't uh, so far quell my nervousness about the direction of the show. So that's what I'll leave at my general thoughts. Yeah, you know, and, and I'll kind of just piggyback on some of that. I, I When I first heard that the director never played a, a, a single minute of Halo, the game at all, I was that kind of scared me more in my opinion. And 
I kind of just was like, oh boy, what are we about to see? And I kind of had that feeling when they said that this was going to be a silver timeline. So um, just to give everyone a heads up, we're not, this is not, this is the non-spoiler section. So we're going to try our very best and not spoil anything so that and if anyone wants to watch the show, you can still watch this preview just because we give our honest review of the game. We give a positives and negatives, and then we're going to give our rating. And then if you want to listen to spoilers, we're going to have that part of our second portion of the show. So, um, yeah, I kind of felt like once I heard that this was a silver timeline, that this was a separate entity of what we've already known to Halo to this point, I was even more nervous. So with that being said, we need to talk about first, let's talk about the positives. Just so, so we can try to brighten the day before we really go to the negative portions. Let's start with the positives. And I'll I'll start this off. I And uh, Hockey, you mentioned this already, but Master Chief never looked so good in a suit in live action before. And I felt like this was exactly the way you would want chief to look and if you've watched any of the tv shows or animated series and they always have chief in a way different attire than what he actually looked like but this was literally almost as identical as you would want chief to look like now granted i guess you could say the green shading is not exactly the same as was it was in the game and you, if all the the halo uh, fanatics can say well it's not exactly the sage green at the end of the day it looks just like chief the armor looks exactly the version i like the most and Pablo Shriver plays a pretty solid Master Chief for what you expect. Like, not saying he was perfect, but he was pretty damn good for a guy that Chief has never had an actor play in that in that position before. Um, and honestly, I was pretty. I liked it a lot seeing Chief on the on the big screen. Um, so I like that. Uh, that's my first positive. I liked to see Master Chief on the big screen. And then I'll let everyone else kind of say once that we can kind of do like a round t- a real around the circle here. So Haki, what is what is one? Actually, you know what? Let me go with Angelica this time, just because he he waited on the uh, in the and the uh, the batter's box in the last. One. So, what's another positive that you say for this one, Angelico? Yeah, I uh, I agree with you. I think the best part of episode uh, one was Chief's look. Um, I thought he looked really good. Um, I thought Pablo did a solid job, and we'll get to the things I didn't like. And I don't think it's Pablo's fault playing Master Chief. I think it's um, a writing issue. Um, when we go to the spoiler section, but. I thought being the chief is really difficult, right? He's one of the most iconic characters in video game. And I thought for the first episode, I thought he did a solid job. Um, mm-hmm. And I thought he looked good. I think they did. That was their best thing that they made was making chief look good. And uh, they, they definitely accomplished that. But another thing I liked, they had the video game guns. Um, and we'll, you know, we'll talk about the CGI, which uh, was hit or miss, but the guns, they at least incorporated the video game guns into the episode, the first episode, at least which I like the covenant guns, uh, the UNSC guns. Um, that was something I also took as a pro. So, uh, Haki, what's one positive that you saw f- from the show? Yeah. So, um, kind of like what Angelic Hill said, so the guns, the, you know, the video game guns, the big thing, the, one of the biggest things that I noticed, uh, was the sounds too. So there was one part where, you know, chief was, obviously getting shot at and you hear the sound of his shield going down and he stops everything like you would stop everything in 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 game and go hide or get into cover and you hear his shield kind of regenerate um and i like took a breath and i was like wow that's you know that's pretty on point the sound you know the music obviously was good um and again like the the guns elite guns um spartan guns were, were there but yeah i definitely think the sound of the shield you know regenerating really got me and i was put a smile on my face you know yeah yeah, yeah kind of building off of that the i think we all can agree that the environment that they put this game in like you think everything where it's like the look the environment the sounds and i like the first person perspective kind of gave that that like little touch i understand that the, the director never played a Halo game in his life, but at least he had probably someone on the set did, and they kind of made that ca- some camera angles make it seem as if it was a, a Halo game for a second there, and you're like, that, that was a pretty cool touch that they added. Um, and I feel like I feel like we all kind of agree that the, the look of it, the feel of it, kind of felt like a Halo show, and I was glad, especially in the very beginning, that they really did emphasize that a lot. Um, and I, I kind of want to see what 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 each of you guys have for another positive, and then I'll I'll give mine as well. So let's go keep going with this, Angelica. What's another positive that you saw here? Um, in the first episode, I thought the action sequence, which uh, again I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I thought the action sequence 
was pretty solid. We talked about the sound of the guns. We talked about again, the way Chief looked. I also thought the other Spartans looked pretty good, too. Um, we'll, we'll talk about the elites and how they look, which wasn't on the same par as the Spartans. Um, but I thought the action sequence, uh, which we'll go into over the spoilers, was actually pretty well done. Um, it was pretty uh, action-packed, the explosions, you know, the death. You know, we talked about it. I actually saw on the top left of the show, it was TV-14 yeah. at MA. Um, so, I mean, people were getting blown up. Body parts were blown off. Um, it, it didn't. It definitely wasn't a Disney Plus TV show. That's what I could tell you. Um, so it, they kind of put you in that atmosphere. I thought the action sequence in episode one was pretty solid. So, Haki, what's another thing you liked? Yeah, I, I would probably double down on uh, what Langella Kill said. The the action was good. Uh, yeah, if you if you're not like a, a into gore, the the first five minutes or even the first you know ten or twenty minutes, you might have to close your eyes for some parts because people's the heads were getting blown off and legs were getting blown off. I was very very surprised. I did not think that they were going to show those type of things. Um, I I didn't mind it. it I, I'm you know. Nowadays, people are, are shying away from violence, uh, which I, I understand. But in movies where you know you're having a war or like a, a villain or something like that, you know, it, some some parts should be a little uh, a little graphic. So, yeah. um, you know, action scenes were good. Character development, you know, with one of the characters <laughs> was pretty good. We'll get into why I was only one, but. Um, and, and I like how it wasn't just uh, Master Chief. Obviously, it was Silver Team. So you got to see a little gunplay from all the other uh, Spartans as well, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, and just to I kind of give my, my last like here, and I think that some of the characters that they had picked and the actors and actresses that they had, I thought matched exactly to what could have been. Now, granted, they don't look like every character does not look like they, what it was in the game. Like, I, I can tell you right now, Captain Keys and Miranda Keys look completely different. Um, you can see that Silver Team is now Blue Team, which a lot of people really wanted. Um, and, you know, th there's a lot of different looks that you can see here. Like, uh, Halsey is, has, is British. Like, there's, like, these little things that are, like, added that are different. But, like, uh, Catherine Halsey is probably one of the better fits, I felt like, on the show. Exactly depicts the way that the character is in the games, exactly the way she is in the show. Um, I thought, uh, like I said, Pablo Shriver, I thought was a pretty good Master Chief for, you know, what we got and for the first episode, obviously. And I, I didn't necessarily dislike Miranda Keys because I thought she played a, a decent character. But, you know, we can go into what we don't like about it in the spoilers later on. Um, and, you know, I think it's kind of interesting the way that they try to make Captain Keys to be a, a mixture between Captain Keys and Captain uh, and, uh, Captain John... Uh, uh, Sergeant Johnson, it was like kind of like a mixture of the two, I guess you could say about that character. But, you know, I think that some of these characters matched well with what they were looking for. I like Silver Team and, and I like the way that they were very, like, very melding with, with Master Chief. And it kind of gave you a sense that they were a squad and they are obviously had each other's back, which was a good thing to see here. So I liked the, 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 the some of the picks that they made for the, and this is just episode one. So the, like I said, I they could be, they could be butchered in episode two. Yep. We could we'll find out, but the point is, episode one so far so good with the performances of the pe of, of all these different people. Um, so so far I'm okay with it. Um, any other likes from both of you? Do you guys have another one? Um, no, I think that's pretty much the biggest ones for me. Um, uh, I'm ready for the cons. Okay, so let's go with the dislikes, and I'll okay, um. Spoilers now or no? No, let's no, let's no. let's let's just give it. <laughs> yeah, we're don't worry. We're, we'll talk about it. But uh, okay, so what are the negatives? And I can't tell if this is spoilers or not. I it's it has to do. We kind of me and Angelica talked about this off screen, um, and we'll we'll get we'll make fun of it a lot more in the spoiler section. But one of the dislikes I had was that the. The rebels seemed as if they were utterly useless in every type of combat I've ever seen. Like guns and bullets seem to not work for the rebels, but when Master Chief pulls his gun out, everything dies. And and the elites, every time they use something, everyone dies. And it, it kind of doesn't make sense. I think that's my dislike: is that for the world looking as well as it is, and the game like it matches the game feel. 
Like, I'm not saying that Marines on your team in, 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 the, in the Halo game are, like, lethal. But, like, they could kill some some elites if they all band together and shoot them down. It feels as if the these rebels, literally, their guns didn't work. It feels like everything they shot was made of either BB guns. And they were like, oh, no, we forgot to reload the real bullets. And then Chief walks in. And granted, I'm like, yeah, Chief's, Chief's a badass. Of course he's going to do stuff. But he wipes out everybody. Like, he, every gun he picks up, which, which granted... Were all rebel guns like let's be real these weren't like they had he had one hit his, uh, his gun he had the assault rifle then it ran out of bullets like all right i gotta pick up another gun he picks up a gun that was a rebel gun and that gun kills everybody like but that's the point it's like what did chief do so differently that the rebels were not doing when they were shooting up the elites in the first place and like it just like doesn't make a lot of sense and that was one of my negatives i was just like yeah the action action sequence was great but like that that doesn't make any sense at all um, so that's one of my negatives. And let me, let's go hockey this time. What's one thing you don't like that you watch from the show today? Yeah, so I, I did mention a little bit before the, the CGI. So um, some of the movements were, were a little weird. The, some of the elites, so it was almost like the elites close up looked like, okay. But some of the elites, when they were like farther away from the camera, like looked a little weird, you know? Um Excuse. It yeah, which which is weird. Like houses. Yeah, you would think that they would either get it all or get nothing, but they got it close up. They didn't get it far away, you know. Um, so I, again, that that was a little weird. Um, you know, maybe the CGI gets better as as the shows you know progress. Um, I, I think that was one of the without giving spoilers. That was one of the main things for me, and kind of how you guys said like the. Yeah, the, the Rebels, I mean, it looked like they were rocking AK-47s and it was not touching the elites, you know, like they, they had like high powered rifles, it looked like, um, but yeah, it was, it was, that part was definitely weird too. So Angelica, what was the negative that you saw? I mean, both of them were exactly uh, on my list as well. The inconsistency with the guns, with like Marsman was saying, and some of the CGI faults, and it's not the most high budgeted show so we have to create some context that's a 90 million budget which is not a bootleg you know budget but it's also not an hbo budget either right so um i knew cgi was going to be hitting this with the show and hopefully if the show grows you'll see the better cgi in season two and, and beyond um so that's why it's so important to have good writing in this show because you know you don't you can't afford that kind of cgi for a long haul um but my uh one of the ones that hasn't been talked about yet is some of the characters that were introduced. I'm very nervous about, and this could change like Marsman talked about episode one is one episode and they could get better or they can go the opposite direction and get worse. But I was not a big fan of Quan, um, the insurrectionist girl who is a, a pretty much a co-main character in this episode and, and feels like it's going to be that going forward um, in this show. Um, she just didn't resonate with me. Uh, and again, it could get better, but I'm just going on episode one. Um, wasn't a big fan of her. Uh, I don't want to go into spoilers, but I just, she just did not resonate. The personality just didn't feel great. It didn't feel natural. Um, it just didn't resonate with me. And then the blessed one, uh, which is another female character without going too deep into spoilers. Um, that is part of the covenant. She also makes me very nervous, uh, in her direction on where she's going. Um, wasn't in a lot, but again, it just makes me nervous on what is going to go on with those two characters. Um, so those were, you know, some of the characters introduced were a con to me. Yeah, um, I could see, I could definitely see that. And I was probably the other point I would make, and, and there's a lot of other negatives that I, I can jump into. But one of the things I felt like, and this was a lot of it has to do with the writing. It feels as if there's like not really great motivations for a lot of actions that people are taking in this show. And it, it kind of makes me kind of nervous. Like, it seems like these are just like, like haphazardly just doing things just to do them instead of actually like having the having the time to let things develop it feels like in some cases they're trying to jump into storylines that could be really interesting if you really develop them a little longer let them bake in the oven and it feels like they're just trying to like make you hooked 
like instantly. But then like that means like, all right, then what are you going to do for the rest of the show that you have to allow things to settle or allow things to cook and allow things to really build up? Because that's the best part about some of these shows is you let time to to let to develop the characters. And then when you want to drop something big, it it feels more impactful. And some of the stuff that was happening in such a fast amount of time in this first episode felt as if they were just like, the, the motives, like the reasons why they're doing these things made, didn't really make a lot of sense. And we'll talk about it in spoilers, but like, I, I just felt like there's like the writing was just, it was just didn't make sense. Like it, it, that's what I felt like in watching the show. Like some things were like cool. And then all of a sudden, like things like big events happen. I'm not going to name them. Big events happen. And all of a sudden you're like, how did we get to this spot? Like, how did this just happen? Like out of nowhere without actually explaining it thoroughly with a good reason. And it was just, Okay, um, I guess that's the route we're going now. And, you know, and granted, I, I it intrigued me, but it was also confusing because if, you know, I, as, a, as a Halo fan, I'm sitting there like, I know what they're going with this, but I also kind of say, you're really going this far, this fast, without actually developing these characters? Interesting, but I kind of don't like it. I just am a little interested to see, all right, let's see if they stick the landing. Um, but it's kind of weird here. But uh, so, Haki, what's another negative that you had for this? um let's see so i mean to go off of what langella gill said the the blessed one uh that that, that was what her name was right the, the oh, that's yeah it's maki it's maki first. it's maki yeah is but name. that's what she's called in the first one okay yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah well basically what they mean by blessed one just just to give everyone context is that you can use the forerunner objects like they, oh, they, whoa, we're spoiling here. Come on. No, man. well, no, it's just, it's the same thing as being a, uh, a, a what you call a, um, wait, oh, geez, I'm, I'm like, a, I'm a Halo nut. I know all these words. Uh, a, uh, inheritor. It's, it means someone that's like inherits the, you know, the future. Like that's basically what it, uh, uh yeah, you know what I mean? So, like, that's, that's basically what the equivalent of the old, of the game version of that is just, you're an inheritor. You're someone that can use, stuff because they said it like you know what i mean like it's just yeah they can yeah, use i know stuff. but i thought that was i know yeah, i know so you could use the like, stuff I, yeah like not, not to get into the spoilers or anything but like that was that was confusing uh, you know when chief touched the object he you know he's he's seeing some things but we'll, we'll get into later that that kind of threw me for a little loop as well um and i guess i love how only one elite I don't know if this is a spoiler, but only one elite got away because he had invisibility. So like, I, I don't know. Like, did, wait, didn't everyone else have invisibility? Or is that like, is yeah, he the like, only guy that has it? Roll up in there totally invisible, you know? But I mean, I, I don't know if that was a con, but yeah, one elite got away, you know? You would think that they'd be able to track that elite down before he got to the ship, but maybe that'll be another, you know, uh, storyline or something. But um, yeah, without getting into any spoilers, I probably that would probably be my only other con. Anything else for you, Langelico? Yeah, I'll just say generically, um, and they kind of hinted at this before the show came out. This is feels like a show that's not uh, not made for the Halo community. Um, it has Halo's uh, name on it. Um, it could definitely be an interesting show going forward. But if you are going into this show thinking like, "Hey, we're going to get a uh, Halo One Two Three experience type of thing," um, you're going to be disappointed. Uh, so to me, that is a bit of a con because we're diehards uh, for Halo. Um, it doesn't mean we're going to stop watching. It doesn't mean it can't be a good show. But it is not. It, when they say they're they're pulling away from the lore, it really does feel like it's going to be a it, it's very own path. Like you know, I was kind of hoping they were teetering on the line between the lore and, and what not the lore. But it feels like, at least at watching this episode, it feels like it's going to be a very different path. Um, than the one we're used to. Yeah, I, 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 that was the whole silver timeline thing. I, I, I'm not a fan of that separate entity stuff because it just it kind of skews what people's view sets is of the of this of the story. Like, you know, being being a Halo fanatics as we are, we played all the Halo games, we know the story, and you know, I, I kept telling myself this. It's I'm, I keep saying like as I'm watching this, I'm like it's it's a it's a silver timeline. It's a silver timeline. Like, because I'm watching something and I'm like, that doesn't make sense because I know this happens, 
But then I'm like, no, it's a silver timeline. It's something brand new. Even if it is Halo, it's something brand new. And I have to keep telling myself that as I watch this. And I can agree with you. As someone that's a Halo fan at heart, knowing the whole backstory, knowing it 10 times over, the, the fact is, is that you have to look at this as a new lens, like someone that you're watching something for the first time. And it's hard to do that when you've been playing this game since I was seven. You know, I've been knowing the same thing over and over again, but now it's something brand new, right? It, and, and that is a difficult thing for a lot of people, and it's tough. So I could agree with that too. So what we're going to do now, just to finish off the non-spoilers section, is we're going to give our honest review of the first episode. And, you know, I'll let you guys go first, and then I'll give my rating. Um, I'll let the Mars Band crew give their 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 spot. So let's go with Langella Kill first, and then I'll go with you, Hockey. So Langella Kill, what would you rate this first episode? A contact. Yeah, I'm gonna give um, a little context behind my score. I do think movies and shows um, a five out of ten is average. Um, so I just want to context that. So I think five out of ten is average for movies and shows for video games. Um, I think the scores are a little bit higher. I think a seven out of 10 is average. So they're graded a little bit differently. I know some people have, have looked at us um, for, for game scores. Um, so I just want to put that out there. Um, I'm going to give this episode a six out of 10. And uh, I'm giving it a six because I thought the, the without going into the spoilers, the fighting sequence was good. Um, the Spartans look good. Chief look good. Um, some of the characters I thought were interesting, like Halsey, like you mentioned, but the CGI was hitting this. Um, and I just didn't love some of the new characters introduced uh, into this uh, Halo universe, um, which makes me really nervous going forward. And some of, and, and we'll talk about it in the spoilers, some of Chief's behavior or you know mindset or actions Action. were a little uh, unchief-like. Let's just I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go, Haki. What would you give this rating of this first episode? Yeah, so um, I'm a tad bit higher than, than Langelico. I got it at a at a seven one. Um, I I did enjoy I did enjoy it. The like you guys were saying, the writing was a little weird. It 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 really doesn't uh, align with with true Halo fans. You know the uh, the the whole silver uh, silver whatever silver little, timeline. Yeah, yeah, whatever it, you want to call it. It's called man like. But again, it, it is it is Halo, man. It, Master Chief was there, Spartans were there, the elites up close looked great, you know. But farther away, that that's where you know it got a little shaky with the CGI, with some of the movements, some of the elites. But um, I thought it was action packed. Uh, I liked I liked some of the characters, kind of like Langella Phil said. Some of the characters were a little iffy. Again, it's just the first episode, um, so hopefully we see more character development and hopefully we get some answers to a few other characters that you know you briefly saw and that really didn't make sense at least to me um so i'm gonna give it a seven one you know i i, I think i i might have overshot on halo infinite when when we did our video game uh, uh, listen i i could be one of the first people right to now. tell you I could be one of the, yeah, well, listen, I could be one of the first people to say, you know, if I'm going to adjust the rating for anything, I can, I can say I can adjust the rating for Halo. I think when I first made right my rating, I probably was the one that overshot it because I was making comparisons to what was out at the time. Uh, and then looking at what was the trash heap around us, I'm like, wow, this game is way better than everything else. So I can understand that. Um, yeah, yeah. But if I'm, if I'm making my adjustment, I can, I'll probably lower it to be more average out, but if I'm making my adjustment of this of this show, and you know, I, if I was someone who didn't want didn't know Halo at all, right? Didn't know Halo as a story, which is watching this as a like, hey, it's not Halo. I've heard something about Halo before. Let me tune this in and let me watch it. I would say this is probably close to seven seven and a half. However, I am a Halo fan, and I will tell you that there's a lot of things I have an issue with with the show. As much as I like the combat, I like the fact that they played they paid homage to a lot of things that Halo fans do like, which is the sound effects, the the look of it, the you know the the weapons, like all these things show you that they did do research into the story of Halo to give people that were Halo fans some nuggets of like, yeah, see, we did pay attention to you. But then at the very other side of this, there's a lot of things they changed 
that did bother a lot of people. And as much as it's kind of interesting, a lot of Halo content creators are actually defending the show a lot and saying, go watch this thing. And I'm not saying not to watch it. To be honest, I think it is an interesting show. And I think if you've never seen a Halo thing, Halo story, anything like that, it's a good intro to, to just kind of see what a Halo universe looks like. Not the Halo universe, but a Halo universe. And that is something I had to tell myself every single time I watched a second of this thing because it's not a Halo canon show it's a show that is similar to halo events not the same it's different um and with that being said i'm going to give it a six and a half i think when you look at the show it has some good po good points the action sequences i thought were top notch and made the spartans the way they're supposed to be they're supposed to be badass characters they're supposed to be dominant but it did they did have challenges it was like they just destroyed the elites there were times where some of the spartans like what well, i forgot the name of the, all the characters what well, they were having difficulties fighting and they needed chief's help and chief was struggling and then all of a sudden he brings out the turret gun and he shows who he is right and the not and not every elite died either so they showed them that like they can handle some of it of themselves but i think that they definitely need to make an adjustment on some things especially when it comes to the combat like making the 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 rebels be actually somewhat competent like competent in any way um and i did like the fact that this episode dove into storylines that i wish the games went into like the idea of the rebels being the major group the reason why the spartans were created in the first place part of the uh you know some 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 background on these characters some background on the relationship between them and the unsc this whole like issue of like propaganda versus reality and like all this stuff like painting the unsc is not being necessarily the ultimate heroes as being like yeah they're messed up in some ways and and there's some good good people and bad people on this one side and i like that idea but then there are some things that happen in the show that just make you scratch your head and just be confused like why did you make that decision? Why, like, why, like, I, 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 you know, I'm not, we're going to get into the spoilers, but there are some things that you could have done easily that make people happy about the show. Cause remember, this is a Halo show. You made this with the title Halo on it. So you're making this to cater to Halo fans, right? That's, that's part of the point, right? And if you're making this show for that reason, you can't do certain things that really will make Halo fans sick to their stomach. That's not really, really a good marketing strategy. So the whole point is, you did some good things here and then you did some really dumb things. And I just felt like you, if you, if you kind of fix those issues, I probably would have went a little closer to a seven and probably a seven uh, and a half. But I think there's a lot of issues here, some positives, but there is definitely some issues. A six and a half, I think is a solid score for a TV show. Um, and I, I, I'm looking forward to see what they do next, but I'm also kind of weary about seeing what they do next. It's like a weird spot. It's like a bitter, but sweet feeling. It's like, uh, it's nice, but like oh, I don't yeah. want to know. I really hope they change some things back. Listen, you know what I mean? Mars Man is a huge defender of Halo, um, but we want to keep it real here. I mean, like I know there's people. Listen, I'll defend it, but when, there's some things that are sort of, sort of in point yeah. where I got to be like, I can't, I can't defend this. You yeah. know? So listen, we're real. yeah. So any any last words before we finish the non spoiler section because. There's a lot of stuff we got to talk about. So the spoilers. So listen, thank you for for everyone who is gonna cut off to this point to go watch. Uh, go watch the show yourself. I I highly suggest you go watch it. I'm not saying don't watch it. Trust me. Like as much as we can be critical about it, I enjoyed watching it because I wanted to see like what Halo was like on the live action scene. I think I want you to go watch it. I want you to comment on this video and tell me what you think about it. Do you agree with our comments? Do you not agree? What's your rating on the show? Just because I want to see what people think, and I really want to get a full-scale view of this, but I really, really want to thank you guys for watching, and please make sure you drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content, including more playthroughs of many other games, including more content videos like these. Um, it really helps the channel grow. We are shooting closer and closer to 200, so we're getting there. A little bit at a time um but thank you guys for watching next up is the spoiler section of the show so please stick around if you want to talk or i want to hear about some of our reactions to the show cutscenes. all right so thank you guys for watching now on to the spoilers all right guys here's the uh spoiler section of the uh of the show here and Wow, uh, there's a lot of things I could talk about. There's a lot of things I can really jump into the conversation, but the way I'm going to organize this spoiler section, I want to break it down to every section of the show. So the beginning, middle, and end, and I want to see what we think about the future. So let's talk about that beginning. This 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 opening scene where we, I honestly like, this is probably the best part of the episode. I mean, you you get the first beginning portions with the Rebels, and they're all sitting there like having a great time, and then, 
you know, and I thought the really cool part was when they started having like the chat TV channels talking about the propaganda that the UNSC is saying like, yeah, these there's apparently some alien force that's destroying colonies around here. I don't believe them. And then like everyone's talking trash, playing cards, and then the elites show up and just kick everyone's ass. And But you know what was kind of a like, weird thing for me? And I'm going to let you guys jump in on this too. I kind of felt like a lot, this was so easy of a way that you knew it was going to happen. Like it, I felt like this was like so... I could tell right away that like, like when the, when the main character, like the girl, uh, I forgot to keep forgetting her name. Quan. Yeah. Quan, when she, when she comes in and she's like, Oh, I got, I'm a, apparently I'm a, I'm a master at finding drugs. So like she finds drugs and, and her and her friends are doing drugs. And then like, you know, like, well, I'm going to go find the doing first shrooms. chance. I, yeah. I'm doing <laughs> shrooms over here. The, the first, the first chance I get, I'm getting off this rock. Like every other, like it still seems like a star yeah. Wars, like Luke, I'm getting off this rock and like everything, like all the time. And you know, like whenever that, whenever someone says that something bad's about to happen in everyone's family, like you, it's like a, it's like a, like a phrase that you say that automatically means that. And yeah. right on cue, the elites show up and start kicking ass. So I want to see your opinion. And we said this in the first part of the show about the, inability of the rebels to do anything to the elites i thought i was like come on now like i get it yeah. like i get it elites are supposed to be like you know you know brick buildings with how strong they are and they're supposed to be elite like that's their name right but yeah. you're telling they me these, like brick they really look like brick they look, they look like <laughs> fridges they look like like fridges yeah. right now I mean, <laughs> like like, like i only watched man. like granted i like I, I saw someone mention like the idea like i never thought of elite like shoulder tackling a truck and like it flipping like i was like yeah yeah because i never would have happened like because like, you run over elites with your car in warthogs i don't think they're just straight up running yeah. into cars shoulder tackling it flipping it in the air because that's a freaking fridge that the elite is a fridge yeah, so, hockey, yeah wow. what do you yeah. <laughs> hockey what did you think of that fact that these elites were like unbeatable like they like, couldn't be stopped yeah, I mean, it was it was a little ridiculous. Uh, you know, we're in the spoiler part now, so here we go. Everyone dies. Every rebel dies except for <laughs> one rebel. What? Come on, what are we talking about? They have high capacity rifles. I get the elites got the shields and everything, but like everyone dies, dude. Everyone. And not elite. one elite. They didn't yeah, take elite. one elite down. Not a single one. The, they blow through the uh, the gate, and everyone's lighting them up, and they just walk like it's. Yeah, you know, <laughs> like, 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 listen, like, I get it. I know the director didn't watch it, didn't play a game of his life. I get it, right? They, these but are the kind of moments that they like. It shows play. you, it shows you that yeah. they never once played a game. And I get it, but you know, like, like, like Hockey said, you're you're watching as the, as these elites are just straight up like just like walking like with style through the gate, getting lit up, and nothing oh. is happening. Like nothing, not even like like oh geez, I gotta dodge out of the way. Like they just like. What are you going to do about this? Like, you're not doing anything. And they had turret guns set up. The guillotine guns set up for them. Like, three of them. Like, at least three. And remember, like, they are talking so much trash. Like, oh, the UNSC, we've been smacking around Marines left and right. Like, all the time. Like, I get it. Like, I know that apparently this the elite makes the elite stronger. Because, like, wow, the, the Marines get their ass kicked by these rebels. But the elite just well, showed up and destroyed everyone. But... Like, and then you, you make that, like, I can understand the covenant being so damn powerful, but then the like Spartans show up like, all right, the Spartans are badass, chiefs are badass, but the, they literally tapped everybody. Like they didn't like, they didn't suffer like any wounds. They like got a little nervous at one point, like, oh, I'm falling down this bridge. Cause they're shooting all the, they're shooting the wall apart. Like, oh, like that bad stuff like that. But they were kicking everyone's ass. No problem. Like it, like it was kind of like, it was one scene where it was close. And then after that, like, chief just like, all right. Give me this guillotine yeah. gun. I just killed everyone. Um, but yeah, no, you guys can chime in here. I, I, I yeah, that there was one point um, where Chief's shield went down, and this was like the cool part when you mentioned like the first person, which like the like the video game, the shield going down, hearing the noises, him waiting in cover until the shield comes back up and then goes back out and fight. Right, like the Spartans looked good. Um, the elites, and this was kind of like the CGI. There were at times it's like the elites when they closed up on them, like they looked solid, right? Like they looked like elites. But like Haki said, you know, when they zoom out, they're like walking, uh, walking fridges. Like they are bulky. They look like kind of like Gears of War characters. They're just walking around like walking this. In. Like, yeah, like, like, like all of them. We're just juiced. And uh, <laughs> like, I understand you have to create like that height difference. Like these are bigger. They're supposed to be towering over normal people. Um, but I don't remember them looking like they look like kind of brute thickness. Like they were like brutes. 
They look like chieftains, dude. They look like yeah. chieftains. Dude, they, they straight up, they're like, they could have been hunters. Uh, I could have been mistaken. Like, they could have been hunters. Be, like, that's like, how big they were. And like, consistency with the guns. And I get AK 47s, they're not the same. Like, but like the biggest scene, and you're going to talk about it when Chief gets in trouble and one of the Spartans is pinned down, he takes a turret gun off a rebel truck, which the rebels got blown white down. Right. And at this, those same trucks were parked in front of the doorway that they were unloading on the elites walking in. They didn't take down one elite. And he takes the turret off them and wipes whatever elites are left with that turret gun. The same rebel turret gun. So, like, what was the difference? Right. So, like, I understand, like, the initially um, them shooting the elites and not going down because they have shields and, like, they have super uh, shields, you know, alien weaponry. So I, I get it that they're unloading on them at first, but like they didn't take down one. Now the good thing, like we talked about it, the sound of the guns was cool, like the explosions, like the elites being uh, ruthless. I mean, they killed those kids in the, you know, in the vault. Like they did not hold back with the brutality, and it kind of showed like, okay, these elites are serious and a major threat. Um, but then it was like, like you said, it was like that 180, um, where it's like, damn, they are unstoppable, and then the Spartans come in and said, okay, these elites suck you know what i mean like it was like it was like one of those things but like i was okay with it because the scene was actually pretty well done and like you said this was the best part probably of the episode so i don't want to rag on it too hard but there was no yeah there, there's just some weird like things you just and the insurrection is general can someone explain to me why his foot is stuck right so he's trying to prevent the elite who got injured and for whatever reason um instead of trying to escape right this was probably i think the uh the general of that platoon or whatever, right? He was a different color elite. Um, so he's injured. He just decided, like, I need to kill this rebel girl. Yeah, like this one like, girl. You know, like, like, I, I, like, I'm, I'm wounded, I'm hurting. I just yeah. escaped the Spartans. I I, yeah. I just got to gotta kill this one girl. I got to kill one girl this, over there. Like I gotta this kill girl. Her. Like, yeah. something is just driving me to kill this girl. So he's walking over there. And then, like, the dad, like, again, the elite is hurt. But somehow his shield is regenerated. And so he takes out the AK and he's unloading on him and it does nothing. Right. And then he like he kills him with the sword, which was kind of badass. Yeah. Like when he stabs him with the sword. Um, but like it just like it was just like, God, that was kind of stupid. Yeah, so Hucky, I, I have something I want to say, but I want you to talk about this part because I feel like uh you you had a lot of talk about this in the uh, in the beginning. So what did you think about some of this some of this weird things that we saw here? So are we still in the beginning? The beginning? Yeah, just the beginning, because I, I got one more thing I want to say, because, like, uh, building on what and Jill Kill was saying it. with the sword, like, so, you know, like, apparently, like, the AK, AK, they should never use AKs ever again. Like, that should be, like, the first order of business that, like, for the Rebels, like, we are never using AK-47s ever again because they don't work, <laughs> right? <laughs> but they don't work because at the same time that that happens where the, the general gets gets killed right in front of his, right in front of his daughter, Chief was just like, oh, turns around, runs right toward him with a pistol. Like, I'm talking a pistol, not even AK. It just eight, eight pieces yeah. of per got perfect. Just perfects the dude and caps him right in front of him. Like, oh, I got him. Like, it's just like, the like, it's just, one, like there's an AK and then there's the pistol. Like, I yeah, get it. And it's one thing, like, like I get if, it. if the show showed when he was shooting the AK that the elite The shield, shield was, was going down, it just wasn't enough. And then he killed him. Like, yeah. I, that would make more <laughs> sense to me. Or at least give at least give the rebels like one kill. Like let the let the dad, like the general, like get the kill on the turret gun. Like he got one kill, and then all of a sudden the elite's like, well, we gotta take down that car. And that's when the, the elite does a shoulder tackle, takes out the car, and it would make more sense. At least then it'd be like, all right, they realize that we gotta take down these turrets because they're gonna kick our ass. Like any game that anyone that played Halo would realize, like, hey, you gotta take down the warthog because that thing's gonna kill us, right? That would make more sense. Or you throw like I don't know, throw a sticky grenade on it, make it like make everyone like, oh, you know, that makes so much sense. Like, you know, they just killed it. <laughs> like something like that. I mean, like, come on. Like, I got like 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 Langella Kill said, the beginning part's the best part of the show. And I, we rag on a lot of these little parts, but it's just because we look at it and we're like, like, you could have did that better. Like, you know, it was a cool part. Everything was nice. So everything sorry, excuse me, but everything was nice. It was just like you, you kind of like these little things that like didn't make much sense. But huh. So if I'm looking at the beginning, I think I'm going to cut off the beginning part where, because uh, let's include now the next part of the beginning where Chief interacts with 
that forerunner tech, that that like little stone thing in the wall. He touches it, and then he gets flashbacks of his life when he was a kid that apparently was erased by Halsey when when they're in the Spartan program, and he gets those memories, and he's just like, whoa, what the heck was that? Um, uh, what'd you guys kind of like about the fact that like the they already are introducing this concept that the humans can touch art like the forerunner stuff that they're the only ones that could touch because usually in the game that never really was a thing until a little bit like especially halo combat evolved that didn't really happen until a little bit later on that they start to really dive into that concept that it was only humans that can interact with it not any other alien race so yeah, let's so go yeah so go ahead cocky i want you to talk about that first yeah, so I, I, I thought that was also one of the better parts, I guess, of the show, um, you know, seeing the the, the memory. Um, so, I mean, because what well, the Spartans got taken away, like they... They were, they, they were abducted when they were like around like seven, like seven years old. Around so I thought that, like, at least shedding some light on that, hopefully there's more uh, to, to go with that. I thought that was a, a cool little point. Um, again, the elite, like, in the shadows, like, <laughs> using his invisibility, just watching the whole thing, uh, you know, obviously it was a little weird, but, um, I also didn't understand, they, didn't they come in one ship, right? I oh, the, they, the, you're talking about the Covenant? No, no, the they Spartan. Had that. Yeah, they, oh. so they, they had, yeah, they had the Pelican, so they had the Pelican that they basically, well, here's the thing, like, that is kind of true. Really know exactly. No, they, well, well, they, well, you do see one pelican fly over and they're like, oh, it's the UNSC. And that's when Chief jumps out. And I'm guessing that's when yeah. the other Spartans jump out. But that is kind of true that when they are leaving, uh, the other the other Spartans go to some other ship. And then, then Master Chief goes on one pelican with the girl and the artifact. Um, yeah. He's like, all right, you guys just go over there. I, I got this one myself. That was the one, that was the one weird thing at that part. Um that I had that, that was my question. Like, where were the other Spartans? They were just the other Spartans were just at reach already, you know. Like it was just them coming back, you know. And, and then you know, even in the ship, you know, things got a little weird, obviously. But yeah, um, I, thought the, I thought the artifact part was cool. Like he touches it. Um, even like the CGI there with everything is going up on the walls and everything in the cave. Like, I thought that was I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, so and Joe Kill, you have anything else to say for the beginning part? Because I actually, yeah, I know I'm a little disagree about the elite uh, escaping. I actually think that was a good thing. Um, I think it was a little weird that he, you know, he got through a banshee, right? Um, we only saw one warship, so you know where he got the banshee, I'm not sure. Um, hopefully, he just came in it. But again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fault them too hard for that. Yeah. Um, I think it was important because he, uh, as we talk about later on he uh, conveys that someone else is able to activate the artifact besides somebody else at the cover, um, that girl. So um, I do think it was an actually important part that he survived. Um, I like how he used the invisibility. I think more of the elites probably should have used it. Yeah, and they probably should have done a little bit more. Um, yeah. So I actually thought I thought that was cool that they There's only a few that. of them have it. Yeah, that at least he was capable of doing that. Um, so I actually wasn't against that at all. I, I thought that was cool that he activated it, you know, bringing back some of those memories. Um, and then obviously it also showed how the UNSC like really surveils um, the Spartans. Like they mm -hmm. have them um, yeah. like locked down, their ship locked down, those, their bodies uh, being watched at all times. So it kind of showed like the uncertainty of the Spartans um, that the UNSC has for Halsey and them um, and like they're constantly monitoring them and they also talk about how much of a valuable asset they are as a weapon right? they mm -hmm. keep referring them as weapons mm -hmm. um, so like you can understand the dynamic that they were creating for that um, so I actually thought it did bring some good context for the uh, for an introduction yeah and I think let's jump to the middle because this is exactly the part where I feel like jump the middle portion is where it's a lot of it is like politics and a lot of it is about power structure where it gets into the relationship between, you know, Cap uh, Catherine Halsey versus the Admiral. Um, and I, I, the name escapes me. He's actually a, a very, really important character in the Halo universe that they, they brought her in. And then you get introduced to Miranda keys and captain keys. Um, and just like you, you see, like how the, there's a structure, there's a power struggle happening between Catherine Halsey, who is the, obviously the top scientist, that is leading like the, the Spartan division and also kind of leading the research division. Um, and then you have, you know, the Miranda keys, who is the daughter 
of of Captain uh, Catherine Halsey um, that is now instead of being a air a pilot, she is now the leader of like the the Covenant division of like research and development. So it's like it, that was one of the big changes that they had from the old Halo story to the new one, where they do first shed light on the fact that. Catherine Halsey is a is a mom. She's not really a good mom, and and that kind of causes some like bitterness between Miranda Keys and C Catherine Halsey because it shows you that they're actually similar in a lot of ways, but they are different because they're you know they they don't really necessarily are on good terms. Um, and Captain Keys, I thought, uh, kind of being like obviously you know being the dad and everything. We we never I never we never got to see a game where Miranda and Captain Keys were in the same room. Yeah. So I kind of felt like that was an interesting dynamic that we never got to see it ourselves. So. I kind of like to see like, yeah, we finally got to see that it come to play, but it was like, it was just different. Um, and when I, uh, one of the most interesting scenes in my opinion was uh, the fact that Miranda keys was sent to be the, I guess you would say lead negotiator to, to try to get, uh, I can always forget her name. Um, Quan, she's like uh, Quan. To, He's a very forgetful person. To get, to get, to get Quan, to get Quan to, I guess say some words of like uh, of agreement that the that the elites, the covenant, are out to kill all the colonies, and that the UNSC was right. And all of a sudden, you know, this is where one of the dumb things happen in the middle portion, where you know, Quan is like, "Well, maybe I'll just tell everyone that the UNSC killed everybody, and that the covenant aren't real." And I kind of sat there and like. What's the actual benefit of that? Like, what? How does that make any sense? And I understand he's like, well, the bartering chip is I want, I want Madridical to be free forever. Like, like that's not gonna happen, all right, Quan. Like that. Like I honestly was wanted to get into Miranda Keys's like body at that point. It was like, Quan, that ain't happening, all right? You're not getting free. Like, like how's that? How do you have any? Yeah, how do you have any like, negotiating so your, tool here? Like, like you all right, want your freedom because everyone else died. Yeah, like, like you, like how you have any leverage in this scenario is like, is just beyond me, and it made zero sense at that point. And maybe I'm jumping a little too further into the middle part, but that was one of the things I brought to my attention that I felt like was just dumb. Like it just, it didn't make any sense whatsoever. Like I like some of the portions. Like I know a lot of people, a lot of content creators were like, "Oh, the middle is the bo most boring part." I kind of was intrigued to see the the battle between Halsey and the Admiral where. They're like, well, they're looking to cut your funding, Catherine. And what are you going to do about it? And she's like, well, like the Spartans are like legit. They 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 wiped out all the elites. They they there's only there's one there's one that's one rebel that's left, but basically all the elites were killed off, right? Yeah. So clearly they work, right? And and that was what the question like, oh, I don't these weapons are as good as you think. Like they wiped out everybody. And yeah, but they didn't and, save. Yeah, they didn't save people, everyone which either. It, which it, it like shows you that there's yeah. Like, yeah, it's an interesting dynamic. Um, and we can keep going into some things like this is why i was just the quan did not resonate with me um it was just so it was just it was just strange the and i understand because like they've been at war for so long like the yeah they're not gonna be like oh, I trust but, like it was just idea. so like it just did not feel natural it was just like Hey, uh, can you say some good things about when I seen is like maybe I'll just lie and say that you guys like <laughs> like, uh, like, what? Four. Yeah, like, like what? Uh, it, like it, just how? Didn't, it just didn't make sense and probably I'm not sure if we're gonna classify this as the towards the end, but the Quan Master Chief conversation. Oh that yeah, that I'll I'll, get, I'll go to that from the end, I guess, because uh, that's like the literally the tail end of it. Well don't worry, we're gonna get into that real real that game. That one really. That was one of the weirdest things I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, that was one and, of the worst parts of the of the episode. Um, and um, like, I'll, I, I'll I, let uh, Haki talk yeah, about Haki, the yeah. so, dynamic well, between Halsey and the UNSC. Yeah. So, what did you think about that, dude? Yeah. So, I I think the bright light in the middle of the episode was Halsey. Like, I I think the actor is the actor's good. Like, she she's spot on as like the you know the the top lead scientist that. Um, you know, that, that's running the Spartans and everything. I think she played a very, very good part. Um, and again, I, I'm pretty sure this was the, no, no, I guess this was the end where, um, you know, Master Chief gets the, the order and everything like that. If yeah. So the, yeah, let's jump into the end. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So, so hockey. So well, let's jump right to the ending section then. So you're, so continue what you were saying about 
the order when the order comes in right and you know like uh you yeah, know, so yeah so go ahead. I, I thought like um I, I guess you see a little bit of the evil side of the unsc like yeah. um han, han or whatever her name Quan. is uh Quan. <laughs> 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 uh, you know she tells the story of of her mom uh you know and w whatever was going on that story and her mom ends up getting killed by the spartans and and it was chief that did it and all this stuff um and then you see chief in the helmet in his helmet get the order to, to essentially kill her uh, so I, I guess you see a little bit of the evil side of the unsc which is like kind of messed up i'm not too i'm not crazy into the lore like i, I know mars is and, and langella kill is as well um but, but i know the spartans were kind of made for control of you know pe the people and, and the rebels and stuff like that but i didn't know they were you know essentially that evil you know or it, it was yeah i mean when you look at the actual lore of spartans in general it was made to stop rebel or rebellions and because uh, the outer colonies were basically trying to rebel against unsc and that's why that like the the, the kwan's home world is actually one of the bigger colonies that does rebel and that's why i like the concept that they were bringing in that backstory because they never did that in the games um and the fact that like the and i can agree to a certain point where the the story that that is ha the character discussion that happens between Quan and Master Chief about her mother being killed. That story literally makes zero sense. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And I get it. Like Chief is like, well, like it, they changed the target, like to be like everyone there. And they they were like, they told me that I have to kill them all. And she was like, so you know, you thought we're all evil. We thought these like random people were just evil. He's like, they told me that there is everyone there was a threat. He's like. And, and she's like, what well, you think that you being there doesn't, you know, is not, is not enough for you to know that it, they're not a threat. And it's just, it makes no sense. Like if they're telling me it's a threat by me looking at you, it's like, oh, well, it doesn't seem like you're a bad guy to me. And, and then it was you, showing like, Hey, Spartans just follow orders. Yeah. That, that's right? the point. Like we get orders, we make them and we make sure they're successful. Yeah. Um, no matter what it is. Um, and like, I actually, that part, I don't. Like I didn't hate them like showing the, 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 the UNNC, yeah, um, yeah. because that actually kind of is closer to the lore, mm -hmm. right? The UNNC they have their views on what peace is, like the rebels have their view, and so like it's based on your view um, and what side you're on. Um, so like that was all fine, but like you said, that conversation was so mind numbing because yeah. it was like, yeah, you know, you killed my mother. Just like, oh, 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 right. my oh, bad. Okay. Like they're up to it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it just like, it. like okay, um, I guess that happened. Um, and like, it, like they say that, and then she's like, you know, everyone views you as a hero. And then my favorite part was like, um, she's eating, and she's like, uh, do you ever take that off? And he says, practically no, right? Like, what, what do you eat? And he's like, I eat computer chips, and you know, like <laughs> microchips. Yeah, and like he chief is dropping jokes, and I'm okay with it. It's not very cheap, like. Um, right, because we're all used to Chief just being a badass and throwing like clever one-liners. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like just badass one-liners, and then he he threw in a corny joke, right? So like that's not the biggest problem, even though it was a little on Chief. Like, but the fact that he said practically, I never take this thing off. Just remember that when we get to the last part, folks. Just remember that because it just like I understand contradictions that happen throughout a show, like things change. It's the same episode where this change happens so um, so let's go yeah so let's get now to the very tail end so this is now the part where the admiral says all right well first off they i got this is where <laughs> this is where it gets a little weird for me because i honestly sat there when i saw chief like taking out the taking out the little camera part like taking out the machine so they can't see the camera i'm like dude like, come on, they, you got cameras on this ship. You don't think they see you doing that? Like, yeah. come on, dog. You don't think they see you doing that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you could have done something more secretive than that. Like, you see them, like, walking up to, like, oh, let me just start. Let me just take, <laughs> take this thing out right here. Like, yeah, like they know, yeah, they know that you're doing it, dude. And I, maybe, like, he didn't care. Like, I, I don't care. You know I'm doing this. But the whole point is I thought, hey, maybe if he was doing that and it gave him control over the ship, then it'd make more sense. But in the very next scene, they're like, all right, take out the oxygen, take them out. And <laughs> yeah. you're like, then why did you do that? Like, if you knew, you're probably going to get whacked. 
Then why was the point of them taking out the camera for? Because they're all right, they can't see you, but they can still sense you. And they're like, I can still see your your like readings of your heat. Like I could see all that stuff. So I, I don't need to necessarily see you know what you're doing. So that part made zero sense to me. And then they started, all right, take out the oxygen. Like at the end of the day, if they land on the re- on reach, like it's not like once the girl leaves leaves the ship, she's just gonna start yelling out like, hey, "You want to see told killed everyone?" And they get oh well, that's ruined. We believe her. We got yeah, everyone good. believes her now. Like no, like they're going. You're automatically going to reach. So it's like taking out the oxygen, making Chief go a wall at that point doesn't really make a lot of sense. You could honestly say like, "All right, you guys are fine," and then you get you take her when when you guys land. That makes more sense. But apparently, like, all right, we got to knock out Chief, go forty percent oxygen, kill her. And, you know, like, all right, that happens. All of a sudden, you're like, all right, well, this is interesting. Like, they're actually trying to like, knock Chief out. And Chief, like a boss, it says, I don't need no oxygen. I'm going to crawl my way to, to, to undo it. Like, and just like, what is one hander is just like, ah, ah, and then takes it passes all good it. now. Passes, passes out, we, wakes up again. <laughs> wakes back up. I guess the oxygen was at 45%. And yeah. this is, it wasn't enough. Like pushes Quan out the way, like <laughs> it just tosses her, bench presses her out of the way. This this opens it up, fixes it, and it's like, well, we're useless. Like then, like the UNSC just like, wow, we're useless. We can't. And they anything. autopilot them back to the base. Yeah, back to the yeah. So, so like, that, the like AI listen, still working. Yeah, so like so this is like the only cool part I thought, right? Where basically everyone's like, the animal's like, listen, like we need to we need to suit up. If Chief is going a wall, like this could be real bad for us, and. Because Chief is like the, and that's what kept. He's like, dude, this is like the badass guy we have, right? We need a, we and need. A, that, and, like these are our most important assets. Yeah, he's the most important asset, and like the admiral like gives no crap. Like she's just like kill him, like just kill them all, like. And that was that part. I kind of like, like uh, you know, you know how much it takes to make a Spartan here, guys. Like you're you're really gonna whack whack this guy off. He's the t- he's the head of the Spartans. Like yeah, but th- you can like, tell the distrust. Um, yeah, I can see so that. Like, and I I, I'll give I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. What I was getting to was that the whole part where they're like everyone's suiting up, getting ready for this like landing. And I thought the best part was when like Catherine Halsey went up to the Spartans, who's like, "Yeah, the order was for you to take out Chief, but I'm su- I'm superseding that, and I'm telling you that if anyone tries to kill Chief, you have my permission to kill them." And I loved how like the the dude Spartan was like. Well, he's like, he's like, one of the ones where like, we're going to fire on friendlies. Fire and he's, on like, friendlies. he's like, well, if they, anyone fires on chief, they're not friendly. And I was like, that's a great line. I was like, yeah. that shows yeah. you that these Spartans are closer tied than anybody else. And that Captain Halsey has a different relationship with the Spartans than anybody else yeah. does either. And I thought that was the best part because it is true that she does. She's the one that basically raised these kids to be killing machines. It's like, so she does have that sway over them all. And that's why I like that part. And I thought that the whole relationship between Catherine Halsey and, and Chief was a good one the entire time because that that relationship is what is so important that it's in the background this whole time is that of all the Spartans, Chief was like the mo- her favorite person and that she was the closest with. And that's why I like that was a good part. But then let's get into like the final portions because this is where it gets real heated and it gets real embarrassing to a lot of degrees. So... Um, let's let, let, like, so the part, and I'll, I'll give some context. That, I'll get some context. The, so the, the context, the context of the situation is where it real dumb. So this is the dumbest part. I think of the whole thing where, because you remember when Quan, you know, Quan is passing out chief saves her and like from like cracking her head open and like gets her, gets her way, turns the oxygen back on. So when Quan gets up, she goes and grabs a battle rifle and is aiming at chief. Like, I don't trust you. I, all this stuff. Like you're what you do to me. Like, and he like, dude, I passed out. Like, what? I also fell on the floor. I also was down, and I saved our asses, right? So now he needs to build trust, right? So this is the dumbest thing. Now, what Chief does is breaks the trend that was put into place for twenty plus years, basically twenty years to by November at this point, and takes off his helmet and reveals Pablo Shriver, the actor, is Chief, right? That's 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 what we see at this point. So Pablo Shriver is Chief's face. Um, it's not a cat. It's not a goat. It's not any of those things that everyone was was ho- was hyping for. It's Pablo Shriver, the actor, is cheap, right? So, so now the face has been revealed. And the first thing I thought to myself was, I didn't want. First off, I already knew when the face was going to be revealed that it was going to be a problem. I think a lot of people were going to be like angry, angry about it. I knew it was going to happen. I, I honestly, just my opinion, I thought it was going to happen at a better part. 
I thought it was going to be more impactful. I thought it was going to be something that like he could not survive unless he did something like, like for example, I'm not, I'm not going to give a spoiler from the show, but like if chief were to had to basically like, all right, chief, listen, we have to sneak by this area. So you got to like be inconspicuous and we need you to take off your helmet to be like one of the randos walking around the city. Like you're going to need to take off your helmet for them to survive. Or if he was badly injured, badly injured, something like that. Or like, or like Quan is like, listen, chief, like we got to act like we're a like we're one of the people here and you got to rock a robe, but you can't be rocking your chief helmet on. You got to take it off. And then he has to take it off to be, be hidden. Like, that would make more sense and more impactfulness than I need to let Quan see my face in my beard that is closely like mine so that you can feel at ease knowing that I have a face. Like, 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 what, like, what, like, what do we, why is that better? And I just said, she just had the conversation with him that, hey, you killed my mom. So what builds trust more than showing, hey, I'm a person. So it's like, you know, you killed my mom. I trust you now. You just show me your face. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. That's what built the trust between us. Uh, Not you standing uh, with the oxygen, right? Not standing with the oxygen. Just just you showing your face. That's what did it for me. I guess, I guess the, and I'll hockey, I'm going to let you talk about too in a second. I guess the mindset, just the, I guess I'll be devil's advocate for a really dumb reason. The, the, the re, I guess the reason that they said of how they build trust was he's like, well, here's my face. If you want to kill me, shoot me right between my eyes and I'm letting you take a shot, right? Because he was like, you can't chill me, shoot me through the armor. So you can take my life if you want, but that's not the best idea here. I guess that was the only, but like even then, like, all right, okay. Like, so Haki, what did you think about this face reveal? Did you, did you think it was going to be like, uh, you know, he's going to have a bigger mustache? Did he have like too much yeah, of a I- beard? I think they're copycats. I think they're copycats. You know, you don't want to mention another another show, but I'm going to mention it. Mandalorian. The guy took his helmet off. Like they're copycats. Like they just want the, the, that's like the big reveal. You know, like Master Chief. I was about to play the entire Master Chief collection to see if there was any point from Halo Combat Evolved to to now. Did he ever take his helmet off? No. It was, um, so he took it off, but you never saw his face. That yeah, okay. that is the quick answer. He's so. in the bathroom. He takes his helmet off, but he never shows it to someone. You know, he never shows. Like that's that's crazy. I was not a fan of him taking it off. Um, and then so, so well, just to I, add, can I, can yeah, I just say this? You mentioned Mandalorian, and I can't put it in the same realm. Because in every time Mandalorian took off his helmet was an impactful moment like Mars Man was was alluding to, right? When his head got cracked open, he took off his helmet uh, for the alien. And we'll talk, but let's just go. It was all impactful situations he took it off. Sense. It made this sense. This did not make sense. And I would have been okay with it if he actually revealed um, his face. But you know how the camera started with the back of his head and it showed Quan like, going like forward like if he just revealed his face and hit it from the audience i actually would have liked it but i still don't love it but i would have liked it so much better because in combat evolved at the end of the game he takes off his helmet the camera leaves the ship before yeah. you see it and yeah. like when he's getting his equipment on in halo 2 right his helmet's off and they put his helmet on yeah, right? so yeah or, or in, uh, in halo face. 4 they show his eyes they don't show yes. his whole face like, so like people they, have seen yeah. his face but like it's the it's the secretive part from the audience and like i like there is such easy layups for a show to do and i, I get it silver timeline bs the, the director never played a game whatever all that is bullshit but like there's layups in a show layups for the halo community and this is one of them you do not need to show his face and you don't need to show his face right out of the gate it's episode (laughs) one episode one and then it's not even like and and we'll go in like he takes his helmet off and then it's five minutes of no he left 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 his helmet right there his helmet's still here yeah he gave it to mars man he's like i have it i I don't need it no more his helmet's right here i got it and the whole point what my thought was is is he just not gonna wear the helmet the rest of the show. <laughs> no, 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 no. 
I'm just oh, please don't die. Shoot me right between the eyes. Is he gonna do that? <laughs> no, like, What's going on? No, don't do that. Like, Come on. like, dude, like, listen, like, I, 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 I play devil's advocate with the whole like he's doing it to show like, like, listen, if you want, you're gonna kill me, then this is the only way you're gonna do it. But you gotta trust me here. I, I feel like if he put the helmet right back on after that to show like, all right, I proved my point. I'm putting my helmet back on. Like I'm back to business. Like I think people will be less inclined to be angry about it because they they, they could they, they would understand, right? That, all right, you did it for that reason. That put it back on. The fear that like hockey just mentioned, like is he just gonna keep it off? Because that was the last thing you saw was him with his helmet off. Like all right, get in and just drives off. Like like dude, like <laughs> flies like, away. I don't like, want the boba like, pen, Yeah, let's I, not I let's it. not get it where like all right, we saw his face once. Like so, just take off your helmet a little more. Like no, like that's not the point, guys. Like I. I'm not saying Pablo Shriver is some ugly dude. He's not an ugly guy. Like, but let's not let's not be mistaken here. This is not this is not a Pablo Shriver show where it's like we're playing like we're not doing Boba Fett. Like we're not playing Boba Fett. This is this is Master Chief, right? He doesn't do that. Like like even like Mandalorian was like it was a big deal. Like if he took his helmet off, like he's not according to his creed, he doesn't yeah, do that, you know, right? Yeah, he, he, according to his creed, that's what you're not allowed to do that. Master Chief doesn't necessarily be part of a creed. What his creed that he has with is with the Halo audience that has never seen his face. And you basically broke the creed, and now it's like, great. Well, at the end of the day, it's like, and I kind of mentioned this, like, way before the show came out. When they announced that he was going to show his face, I already know, like, all right, when the day comes, when the show, when the game finally ends, and Chief does reveal his face on the game, it's going to be Pablo Shriver. I'm just telling you, just to give everyone a heads up, it's going to be Pablo Shriver is the face of Master Chief, and just be aware that that's what's going to happen. I, granted, granted, I said this um, off off video that I know what his face looks like. I've seen graphic novels, I've seen all these things that yeah. show his face, right? I show his face as a kid. I I seen it. Like it's not like I haven't. Like it's like a blasphemy, but it's just the part where it's the whole story of man versus machine, right? And Chief is constantly struggling with the co the the concept of. The machine part of him is being the soldier and do, does whatever they, they tell him to do, no matter what, doesn't question it. The human side of him is the part that questions it. And I like the, and this is like, we'll finish out this, this last part where the concept and storyline they're going with, with the battle between man versus machine and the fact that Quan is trying to get Chief to realize, like, as much as people are telling you to do certain things, you can be your own person and, and think, contemplate things on your own without, without them telling you it. And, I didn't mind that storyline. I just felt like, and I mentioned this in the earlier parts, I felt like you're jumping the gun on yes. this whole chief being a wall, like yes. build up to that. Like I like that. First off, if Halo five did it the right way, which is so far, this show did better a wall chief than Halo five or three for three has ever done. Yes. So that part, like I didn't mind the fact that chief is like play, breaking the rules and doing his own thing. I like that concept. But build it up a little bit more. So what? Episode two, Chiefs a wall. He's running away from the UNSC. Like, like that. That kind of that kind of gets me a little weirded because it's like that's only episode one. Like you're kind of like, how do you build that for an entire season and then carry that on to season two? Like I'm really wondering what's the format and pacing going to be like um, from here on out. And and maybe we'll jump to our what do we want to see for the future because I think that's gonna that kind of a perfect segue here. Is for episode two in in the future. Well, can I just say one thing? Yeah, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I want to give the show props for for showing one of the prophets. Um, yeah, yeah. The covenant uh, mercy. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was a really cool dynamic. We didn't talk about it. The it it's technically that's the middle of the show. We we I was gonna yeah, say we, we glossed over part. it. But yeah. the character, the blessed one, that was the one where it makes me nervous. But you kind of got a, a a feel of why the blessed one is there. She's able to identify. You don't know how, where relics are, and she can activate them. Um, but Mercy comes in and says, hey, um, we didn't get the relic, but one of our soldiers told me they found someone else who can activate it like you. And like, oh. you can kind of get that dynamic. The blessed one um, was like a little shocked by it um, because I feel like she, that's the reason the covenant has her alive um, to activate these relics. And so you can kind of see that dynamic. And he said, hey, don't bring that book into our meeting. Um, you're supposed to be studying how to defeat the humans, right? Not become them, yeah. right? So like that was an interesting, and that's actually one of the more interesting scenes. I know we kind of gloss over because there's a lot of things we want to get into. That was an interesting scene. 
um, that yeah, I do no, want to give I, credit before we go into episode two. Yeah, so hockey, was anything on that part? Because I, I was going to mention something about that too. Did, did you? Yeah, did you so, like that one. So yeah, just briefly, it, if she was human, that was the only. Like, yeah, it, so it, it's it, yeah, it's confirmed that she is a human. Like so, yeah, she is like, yeah, 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 like hated humans. Yes, I know. So that was a little weird, and then. Um, which again, we, we can we can touch base maybe on another uh, episode and go go more in depth. Maybe when she comes back and further episodes, we'll do another round table. But the other thing that I wanted to quickly discuss was Cortana was mentioned and like so so Cortana. So just to give everyone a heads up, in one of the scenes in the middle portion where basically Halsey's talks about the Cortana program, where they're basically this is like the origin of Cortana being created. And the Admiral kept saying, like, you got to stop with this Cortana project because you, you don't have the funding and it's something that we don't want you okay, doing. They didn't and then the okay. they didn't give her the okay. And all of a sudden she goes in her back room. She sees this, like, bald version of herself. And that's Cortana. That's right. Cortana basically being made at the moment. Because, like, it's... Cortana, is Cortana small? Like a small AI? Th this like is where I'm a little, like, hazy on it because... Because oh, I was sitting there, like... Like that's a pretty big machine for a Cortana device to be in, huh? Cortana's gonna and, be like bigger than than like. Like than <laughs> I, I, I mean, I don't know to I be honest this, with I you. Think this and, goes into episode two. What we're yeah, see. and and that's where like the future part comes into like this. What do we want to see in the future? I don't want to see that. Like I don't want to see <laughs> Cortana. Like, I don't see. I don't want to see Cortana be like a child in size, but like be like a like a woman, but like a child in size. Like oh, I'm Cortana. I'm an AI. And then, like, Chief, you got to carry me on your back while we go into battle. Like, I like stuff like I that. I feel like, like it's going to be, like, kind of one of those she cloned herself and then taking the mind of the clone and making it into that AI type of thing. If that, if that That's is what I case, think is going to I, I, I hope you're right, Angelica. I really hope you're right because if I see Cortana not only not be blue, because that's one thing that's already I, yeah, annoying me. It. She's not blue anymore. She's, she's regular. She's just skin color like regular. Right, black hair, like yeah, she's, black, got features. She, she's, she's a like, woman. She's straight she's up just woman, like a live woman, right? <laughs> but not even that. But she's straight up. If she's the size of a child, I'm gonna sit there and just be like, "What are you guys doing? Like, what are we, what are we doing here with like the stuff that's just normal? Like, she's supposed to be an AI, and you're making her into a person. That's not, yeah, that's the two different child, things here. A child like she's a she's a, she's a God. child. Yeah. Like, okay, so like that's one thing. What I also want to see for the future is. I want to see more Covenant. I, I want to see more, like, I like that the scene, which was surprising because we were all nervous about Maki, like, which is the blessed one. Um, we were all nervous about, like, how Maki was going to be, like, formatted into this. And the one scene we got with her in the scene actually kind of made me intrigued, like, thank goodness they made it the way this was because we were nervous of, like, because, like, Haki said, the Covenant doesn't like humans. Then why do they have a human working with them and invading people? Like, this was the only way you could have accomplished that. Make it seem as if she's the only one that could do these, like click the forerunner stuff and make it work. Because Mercy that's and the other and the, and the other Covenant think like, oh, that's the only reason why you're alive at this point is because you could turn on and find these forerunner devices. And it made me feel like, oh, thank God, thank God it was like, oh, we found this baby girl and we were like, oh, we can't kill it because it's a baby girl because we just watched them annihilate a bunch of kids in the first scene of the game. So I'm like. You, you can't have this like two way street of like you keep yeah. one human alive, but everyone else you annihilated them. Like, so thank goodness they made a reason for that, right? So I want to see. We don't that know. We, we hope, That's what we we hope so. Or yeah. maybe Mercy, Mercy secretly likes like humans and they want to adopt this kid. Uh, uh, who knows? But and they want to raise them like a, like a family. <laughs> so I want to see more covenant. I want to see like yeah. Mercy. I want to see regret and truth. I want to see them in I a room see covenant talking. Characters, man. I want to see, like you said, Mercy. The other prophets. I would love to see some elite characters. If you could possibly do that, that would be so cool. Even like we know Arbiter, we, we anticipate Arbiter being involved, yeah. right? But can we get some other like maybe generals or stuff like that, and like actually have some Covenant storylines, which would make this even more dynamic. You would have the UNSC politics. You'd have the Covenant like situation, and then you'd have the war between them, mm -hmm. like. I feel like that would make it so dynamic um, that uh, please, please don't just make the covenant like these prop up bad guys who show up, you kill them, okay, on to the next place, kill them, you know, like don't make it like that where it's just the blessed one versus the prophets 
um, type of thing. Please yep. don't do that. And what do you want to see, Hockey, for uh, for the future? Yeah, so um, I would. I mean, what uh, Angelico was saying, if if we if you can bring in some real um, elite names, that'd be dope. Obviously, the Arbor has got to make an appearance. If he doesn't make an appearance, you know, near the end or whatever, it would be pretty disappointing. I'd also like to see not only elites but other Covenant. Yes. Uh, Human, I don't, I don't know what they're called. The, the grunts and the brutes, the jackals, yeah, the like jackals. I saw all they're these different brutes. aliens. Yeah, all these different aliens. Like, listen, the covenant yeah, is a cult different. of all these aliens, and they have a council and government and everything. Like, yeah. give them some, so give us some light here. Give us, give us some stuff that go on. Then, because, um, yeah, go ahead. And then, you know, obviously, like, I don't know how many episodes are are slated. Uh, I I think maybe seven or eight. I think something right, like so that. Let's say seven or eight, like the eighth episode, and and they do have other seasons in the works, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. our second season, second season's already been purchased, so it's cool. coming out. So, yep. So at the end of the, I don't know if it's too early for this, or if we're talking future next season or a couple seasons if they stay alive. Um, everyone wants to see the flood, even one of those little dumb little things just at the end of the eighth season, you know, listen, man, they, they could do it in the thing. You could definitely do it. <laughs> they did in the movie, the thing they could, you could yeah. do it. It's like, it's like possible. Anything, Any type of flood at the end of the season will be fire. Just like, you know, even like on a ship, like, you know, the uh, master chiefs, you know, flying away somewhere and there's a messed up ship or a blown up ship and the floods there, you know, or yeah, something, something uh, like, and, and you know what, maybe I'll give my last one is I, I, and I, I'm not going to see blue team. I wish I could see blue team. Cause I really, I wanted to see chief with blue team in an actual like reach setting because they're on reach, right? Like that the, right now they're currently on reach the fall of reach storyline with the chief and like this blue squad and his blue team, his pals, like, and one of his good friends gets killed in the in the Vault of the Region in the, in the origin story. I wish they went into that. And obviously, there's a silver timeline, so it's not really going to happen. But I really want to see more more character development some, from some of these people. Like I want to see like uh, Captain Keys a little bit more in like development. Like that, he's only in like really like three scenes. Like he's with the scene with Miranda, and then he's like kind of like the side he's guy. Yeah, he's the like, Admiral's lackey. He's not really doing anything himself. Um, I kind of want to see more Captain Keys because he was a great character in the, in the Halo series. Um, Miranda got a lot of stuff. Uh, I thought um, Catherine Halsey did great, so I think she had a lot of airtime here, which is she deserved it. Um, I, I want to see these other Spartans have more like more like more stuff to them. Like you know what? Like they were badass in the fight scene, and then the scene they had before they the final part was was which was great, but it was only like really like five lines total. I think I heard five lines from all the from the other Spartans. And Chief was the main dude. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I think give some more light to these other Spartans. I thought that they had a lot of cool parts in this. And I want to see more of that. And I'm sure they will. You should definitely do the Spartan program. Like I, That should be like origin story. This is the perfect time to do that. You're on reach. You have the Spartans here. You're going, giving Chief flashbacks. And apparently, and like I said, I already know kind of some aspects of the story that they when chief goes a wall right one of the things they say is they got to go uh protocol si uh, soren protocol soren soren is a spartan that had went a wall a long time ago because of the the messed up stuff that comes along with the spartan program like gene code splicing that they basically do that makes you like your body get bigger and his body got this for i got not like not just foreign but his body's basically broken because of it and be, because of a lot of that, he goes AWOL. And they basically created a protocol that for a Spartan that goes AWOL, they go after him and all that stuff. So they already said, we got to do a protocol Soren after Chief. And are you apparently Soren has already been, uh, you see trailers of Soren that he is in this show. And I want them to go into the backstory of the Spartan program. That would be great. I thought that's such a cool concept. And I really want to see it in live action. I think that was a really cool thing. Um, anything else for you, for yeah. any of you guys for future stuff you want to see? Um, and again, we're talking about going into episode two and, and for the audience watching at this point, you obviously are uh, big into the, the, the first episode. Unfortunately, um, some of the big shots, big content creators got to see episode two, which mm -hmm. the rest of the, of us have not been able to. And let's just say they didn't give it a great response. Um, so that's what makes me nervous. Yeah. And we're hearing it could be a potential filler mm. episode. Um, so 
You know what though? A filler, thing, but... I want to see it. I need to see it um, because I'm not just going to go off people's opinions, but that's kind of the word. And just want to give some, you know, numbers out to the audience for the Halo show. And, and we've talked about this before on kind of how shows are set up to fail. Um, if you go on IMDB, um, IMDB, excuse me, which they rate shows, Halo is at a 6.9 uh, so far. Right. So it's not like it's not terrible. It's not great either. So you see a lot of those mixed reviews, Rotten Tomatoes. Um, I actually think uh, the user score is higher um, than the critic score. So I'm looking that up right now. It's a 57 um, for the critic score um, and it's 67 for the user score, but only 400 uh, reviews so far. So I just wanted to kind of put that context out there. It's mixed. It's, it's mm -hmm. mixed out there definitely um, for the first night and for the first episode. Yeah. Uh, so Aki, anything else uh, future-wise you want to see? No, I, I just uh, hearing Langelico say that. Yeah, I, I have no idea from from how crazy just the last you know five ten minutes of of this last episode is. I have no idea where they would go. I, I can only assume it would be a filler episode to get them back on track to to continue the story. And again, if they only have seven episodes in the in the season, um, you would just hope that they have some you know strong story telling yeah. in you well, know three to seven you know yeah episodes. so like this is my thing as much as they say filler i think what they mean by that is probably a lot of politicking going on not necessarily a lot of yeah. action which is which is obviously could be doubt like really if you're into the action which i am could be boring and if you're not into the politics stuff like oh, oh god this is gonna be a politic episode i get it but if it's story to being developed by character discussion and things like that. I don't mind that. And I, that's the one thing like you kind of like, I want to see where they go with it. I, and as much as people are ragging on it saying that, you know, it's going to be probably a filler. I want to see it. Like I, yeah. this is not an anime, like a filler in anime is different than a filler on this type of show. So I, hope, <laughs> I, so. I know I, 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 when I hear, whatever I hear, whatever I hear the word filler, I'm thinking like stuff that's anime, useless, that does nothing to the story. It just is useless. So it's I crazy. don't want to hear the word filler on a show like this, because you can't have an episode of a filler because basically just that's one seventh of your show is gone. Like it's just useless and, and disappears. So I really hope that it's not a filler. I really hope it just develops these character connections more. Right. I think that'd be good for me. Um, but listen, I, I, like I said, I recommend to go watch the show. I'm sure we all recommend to go watch the show, but yeah. just be aware of what you're watching. Like, you have to tell yourself that if you're a Halo fan, this is not the same Halo game. And it's like one of the best titles of a review I've saw was this is not your dad's Master Chief. That hits exactly on the mark. This is not the same Halo game that we all grew up on. This is a different Halo game, a Halo show, Halo story. So be aware that when you watch the show that just keep that in mind because if you're if you're looking at this from a perspective you've never seen the show before or never seen the story you're going to be intrigued you're going to be interested in my opinion i think you're going to like that there's a lot of comment a lot of cool stuff here a lot of interesting story you'll get into it for those halo fans that are upset that this is not exactly like the story i understand you we empathize with you we understand you completely but we also could say we could pick apart the good and the bad and we could say it i recommend to go watch it but I would wish it was closer to the story than than not. But uh, I don't know, guys. Any final words from you guys before we nah, close we it out here? A lot. We we went a deep dive. Uh, we yeah, yeah, we really did. We went a long conversation here, and honestly, I love having these roundtable discussions. We do a more a lot of them, a lot of these, and um, you know, we're gonna be talking a lot about the show, uh, and also just a lot about gaming in general. As you know, if you if you're a subscriber to this channel. We do a lot of gaming discussion, a lot of gaming content videos, and a lot of streaming. So definitely please make sure you drop a thumbs up and subscribe so you do get notified when we do our next video, our next uh, roundtable discussion, or just next content video. And I, and just to give everyone a heads up, I was debating on doing a content video about gaming TV shows. But then after this first episode, I feel like I need to now. And that's going to be one of the show, next videos I drop will be a kind of deep dive into gaming TV shows and are they doomed to fail from the very beginning? And I, this is going to be a nice little segue to that. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. And please, like I said before, tune in next time. And the, from the Mars Band crew, thank you for subscribing and watching up, watching us up to this point. It's been a long video, but it's been a, an interesting day for sure. But this is Mars Band Gaming 
signing off. Peace.